Hey everyone, this is Stefan from projectlifemastery.com and in this video, we're gonna talk all about content creation. I'm gonna share with you guys some content creation strategies that I've utilized in my online business that's helped me grow to where I'm at today. And I'm also gonna share with you guys how to create content online so that you can attract more people to you online, whether that's visitors, followers, fans, likes, uh, subscribers to your email list, whatever that is, so that you can actually build something, build a brand that can allow you to make money online. Now, as I've mentioned before in previous videos, I believe that content marketing is one of the best ways to build any business that's out there. It's one of the best ways to attract people to you online. It's one of the best ways to build a relationship with people, to add value to people, and it's just you know a very fulfilling, enjoyable process. It's actually my favorite part of my business and what I spend the majority of my time doing. And if you look at the internet, if you go to Google, you type in anything, you go to Facebook, you go to your Instagram, whatever it might be, what is it all made up of? Content. Content is what makes up the internet. And I believe that in this day and age, you have to be a content creator. You have to. You have to utilize content to attract people, to add value, to build relationships with people because that's the best way to do business with people. If you already have a business or just starting out, you gotta understand that people do business with people that they like, they know, and they trust. Um, if you can have a relationship with people and do so by adding value and genuinely helping people and making a difference, then they're gonna be more likely to do business with you as opposed to someone else out there that they might not know. So content is powerful. And the truth is, you're already most likely a content creator whether you acknowledge it or not, right? If you are actually on Facebook or Instagram, YouTube or Snapchat or Periscope or whatever it might be, Twitter, and you're posting, you're publishing, you gotta understand that you are creating content. You are already creating content. If you're posting on your Facebook page, whether it's reposting something or you know posting whatever it is that you did that day or whatever it might be, you are already creating content and publishing that online. The question is, are you using it strategically to attract people to you, to build a better relationship, etc.? Now, the truth is, people that are already on Instagram and, and, and Twitter and Facebook and Snapchat, they're posting their day, they're posting their lives. Whether you know it or not, the friends that you have, people that are already following you, in doing so, that's building a better relationship with them. They're, if they're watching you and they're consuming your content and they're watching what you're posting online, then they're building a, be a better relationship with you because you know, you're showing them what you're doing. They're getting to know you a lot more and that's really just the beginning of content creation. Now, let's just dive right into it. Um, there's different types of content and there's different forms of content. And uh, I'm gonna try not to keep this video too long for you guys, I value your time, but I wanna explain this first before I get into some of the strategies and how to actually create content. So there's different forms of content and the way that I break it down, I'm gonna write it out for you guys. Uh, there is video, and by the way, I apologize for my writing in advance. Oftentimes it can be a little bit messy. Uh, there's video, okay? Video, you're watching a video right now most likely. Um, you know, it's the most popular form of content online right now. If you look at YouTube, if you look at Facebook, if you look at Instagram or Snapchat or Periscope, it's made up of video. So video is very popular online. Uh, you know, live streaming now has become popular too. And while there's different forms of content, there's also different platforms that these different forms of content support. So for example, video, you most likely see it, I've already mentioned it, on YouTube. You see it on Facebook. Facebook video is very popular. You know, Snapchat. Uh, there's Instagram. There's, uh, you know, there's live streaming platforms too, like Twitch, everything as well. Uh, there's Periscope. I mean, there's even Amazon video. There's many different platforms that support vid uh, video, okay? So that's one form of content, very powerful, the most important. The other form is podcast, right? Also known as audio, right? So some people like to consume content by watching it, they're more visual. Other people like to consume content by listening. Listen to a podcast, whether they're at the gym, 
uh, they're driving in their car, whatever it might be. I like both and obviously both forms of content I like to consume audio when I'm maybe at the gym or doing things where I can't sit down and watch a video. Uh, although I do like to watch video sometimes while I'm like on the treadmill or I'm on my mini trampoline or whatever it might be. So it really is a matter of preference, but podcast is most commonly found on iTunes, you know, and there's other platforms out there as well. And then the third form of content are articles, okay? Articles, you know, are found, you know, not necessarily even an article, but I just say written content because, you know, there might be a post on Facebook that is written. You might find something on Twitter that is just a written tweet, okay? So I wouldn't necessarily even call it articles. I'm just gonna say written, written content. Um, it could also be on a blog. So let me write down some of these. So blogging. And that could, by the way, be on your own blog or it could be on someone else's blog. You can publish on, uh, you know, Medium or Quora or uh, some of these other platforms that might be out there. So you can submit content to other directories, websites, or you can have your own blog, which is obviously more ideal to have your own website. But articles, blogging, you know, even Facebook, um, Twitter, okay, and there's, there's, other, there's other platforms that are available as well. And then the fourth type is images. And images, you know, where do you find those? You find those on Facebook, Instagram, right? Instagram was definitely built on images. Oops, Instagram. You also find them on Pinterest. You know, and they're, they're also, you know, you can have them on, you know, Twitter, share images and things of that nature too. So these are the main forms of content and I want you to understand these are the main forms and you know, you can maybe move a little bit more towards video if you prefer that or podcast or articles or images, whatever it is, but I want you to just understand the different forms of content that are out there. It looks like the sun is coming out by the way, so there might be a bit of a glare here. Okay, from that, there's different types of content. Okay, there's different types of content and I think it's really important to understand that and the different types will be based on the form of content. So for example, um, I don't know if I'll write this out, but for video, or really for most of these, it could be like a how-to uh, type of content. So maybe similar to what I'm doing right now, just me explaining and teaching something, this is like a how-to type of video. It could also be a screen capture video, right? So it could be me showing my screen, walking you through a tutorial, and actually walking you through a process. Um, a type of content for video could be a case study, right? Me maybe sharing a result or a case study of, an, uh, of an experience that I might have had. It could be also an interview, right? It could be me sitting down interviewing someone else and uh, you know, that could be, a, that's, that's a type of content that I'd be creating and sharing online. And the same thing with a podcast. Interviews, very popular, or it could just be teaching something or you know, a type of content could just be rambling on and ranting about things. You know, for video, for example, vlogs are very popular. Just day in the life, people just kind of watching kind of like a reality TV show, what that person is doing, that is a type of content. There's also, you know, comedy types of content, and so it doesn't necessarily even have to be education based. It could be comedy, humor, pranks. You know, if you look on YouTube, you'll see many, many different uh, types of content that comes in many different forms, and the type of content is gonna be based on the niche in the market that you're in, right? So let's say that you're in the fitness market, then obviously there's a certain types of content that are gonna uh, be more relevant to the people that are in that niche, that are gonna be actually interested in that. Uh, you know, if you're in the space that I'm in of self-development, there's gonna be other different types of content that are gonna benefit that. If you're in the, the humor market, then different types. You know, if you're a musician on YouTube, then the types of content that you're creating is music, right? And that is a type of content. So different types of content for each form. Uh, you know, articles, there's many different types there too. There's maybe a list that you could have of the 10 steps to whatever, right? And you just have, you know, bullet points that basically describe what that is. It could be, uh, it could be, um, uh, what do you call them? It, it basically just a really in-depth article that goes into step-by-step -step how to do something. So like a how-to type of thing, uh, tutorial. It could even, you know, be I've seen a lot of people that create articles 
where they bring in other influencers. They're actually creating content based on tips or advice from other people. You know, one different type of content that I did was really popular was I shared the morning, the morning rituals of successful people. And basically, I just basically took a list and studied and researched all the different types of rituals that people had that were successful, and I put them together to create a piece of content. So many different types. Images, for example, could be inspirational quotes. It could be just any quote in general. It could be a funny quote. Uh, you know, it could be a beautiful picture. Uh, you know, a picture of you know uh, artwork or scenery or whatever it is. You know, if you're in the photography market and you're in the outdoor market, there's going to be a different type of content that you're going to create as opposed to maybe if you're in the, the cooking market, right? And it's going to be your images will be more so, uh, you know, pictures of food. So different types, different forms. And by the way, I apologize that the sun happens to be coming out. So that's why there's this big glare here with the sun. But um, so there's different forms, there's different types, different platforms. Okay. You got to understand that. You might be asking, how do you create content? You know, what is the process and how do you come up with ideas of content to create? Because I think a lot of people, they get lost there. And for me, that's never been an issue because I always think there's unlimited number of ideas of pieces of content that you can create in an online business. And uh, I'm going to share with you guys, I'll give you guys two ways that are pretty simple and straightforward. The first way is to look and find what people are searching for online. Okay. So Google and YouTube are incredible resources that can tell you a lot of information of what people are looking for online. And the, you know, Google is a search engine, YouTube's a search engine, and when people search on these platforms, what they're doing is they're typing in keywords. And they're typing in exact words or phrases that they're putting in the search engine to get certain results that come up. And there's a ways through uh, you know, researching and whatnot to be able to de determine which keywords are most popular and the total search volume for those keyword phrases. So for example, Google has a free tool called the Google Keyword Planner. You could do a Google search and you can type in Google Keyword Planner and it will come up for you. And it's actually a feature that they have available for their Google AdWords to help advertisers be able to target different keywords for their advertisements and whatnot. But basically you can use that tool for free and you can uh, you know, put in a keyword phrase and what it will do is it will give you suggestions for keywords that people are searching for in Google and it will give you the exact phrases as well as a total number of searches that approximately people are searching for every single month for that keyword, right? So for example, you know, if the keyword is how to, how to, how to lose fat, you can put that in, tell you exactly how popular that phrase is and give you other variations and suggestions of keywords like that that you could then target to create content around. So that's a very valuable way to determine and get ideas of what people are looking for online. And when you create your content, you want to utilize search engine optimization and YouTube optimization so that you can really optimize that content for that keyword so that people can find it when they search for it and be able to consume and benefit from your content. Okay, you got to be able to optimize your content so that you can get it out there and attract people to you online. And especially when you're first starting out, because when you're first starting out with a, maybe a blog or YouTube channel, whatever it is, you want to make sure that you've optimized your content for keywords because that's the only way that people are going to primarily find you. Once you've got an audience, you don't have to be as diligent about optimizing all your content for keywords because you're already going to have a list and audience of people that will consume your content the moment that you release it, okay? So it's more so very important at the beginning to help people try to find your content and be able to consume it uh, from you. So that's one way, okay? Google Keyword Planner, very valuable. That will give you ideas of, of uh, you know, and I usually have a whole list. Like I have a whole spreadsheet and Evernote and whatnot of just all these content creation ideas and what people want. That's you know, really valuable. And what you'll find too is that as you build a following, as you get traffic, as you get followers, then you're going to get a lot of questions. You're going to get a lot of people that are going to ask you to create content around this or create content around that. They're going to give you ideas and suggestions and, and they're going to share their problems, their goals, their desires and really it becomes much easier to create content after that because you just constantly have people that are giving you ideas of things that you want, they want you to share or go deeper into. And then the other way to create content is by just looking to see 
what content people are consuming in the niche and market that you're in. So if you're in the fitness market, then you should be following the other people that are in that niche and market that are into fitness. You should follow the leaders in that market. You should follow uh, them on Instagram, on Facebook. You should subscribe to their email list. You should be a follower on their YouTube channel, their blog, etc. And just observe and see what content that they're creating. You can also see what their most popular content is, which is the content that has the highest engagement of the, you know, the most views or whatever it is. The beautiful thing about the internet is so much of this is transparent. So much of this is so easily available for anybody to be able to see. So you can easily see, hey, you know what? I noticed this topic is really hot right now. It's trending. It's really popular. A lot of people seem to be interested in this. Well, that's a great idea of something that I could create as well. Now, you should never copy or plagiarize someone in any way. Um, you know, you should always give credit to different people and whatnot too. So you don't want to explicitly copy the person's headline and, and, and actual content itself. You want to modify it, improve it, share your own experiences and personalize your content in your own way also. So that is another great way to come up with ideas for content. And I think when it comes to creating content, it really depends on the type of content, the niche and the market that you're in. And there's really no right way of creating content because I think it really depends on the audience and the market that you're in. Um, you know, I think that the, po the process of content creation, you should be creative. You should uh, express yourself in different ways. That's the beautiful, beautiful thing about it. I think that you should per personalize your content in some way if it's necessary or appropriate as well because I think what is more powerful than the content itself is the person behind it and the connection, the relationship that the people have with that person because you know, you can get the same content from multiple different sources but some people relate to different people more than others. So for example, in the self-development market, there are so many different gurus and experts that are out there from Tony Robbins to Brian Tracy to Les Brown. Some people they find Tony Robbins obnoxious. He's too loud, he speaks too fast. They don't really relate to him, right? And they more relate to Brian Tracy or maybe they more relate to Jack Canfield. You know, there's all these different people that might be sharing similar content, similar principles about goal setting and motivation, time management, whatever it might be, but people relate and connect to different people. And I think that's, that's why you want to personalize your content and use your own personal stories and experiences to, to also help build a, de a better relationship with people too because people relate more to people rather than just having the content the information but without the personality behind it, I don't think it could be as effective. So um, there's many different ways of creating content and I think it's being creative with it and seeing what people are already consuming, getting ideas from that and creating something uniquely your own as Bruce Lee says, to take what works, discard what doesn't, create something unique to yourself. And I think at the beginning stages of creating content, you're almost like throwing shit against the wall and seeing what sticks. And you're trying different things, you're experimenting and you have the freedom to do so and you're going to see what, you know, what, what's working, what's not working. You're going to have certain pieces of content that people are going to really enjoy and benefit from you and you're going to, as time goes on, get feedback and see what people think and, and feel about the content that you're creating and then you're going to be able to create and tailor better content towards the audience that you're trying to target and be able to benefit them more that way too. So the journey of content creation is a process. Um, you know, it's a process of trial and error. It's a pro process of experimentation, trying different things and seeing what works and learning from others and observing and seeing what people, what's resonating with people and how it's connecting with them. And I think also a common misconception, I think this video has gone on for quite a while, but a common misconception as well is that people stop themselves because they think their content has to be perfect and it's not true. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect. Nothing's perfect. Really the key thing is just to get started and don't worry if you don't ha yet have all the camera equipment. Don't worry if you don't have, if you're not the best writer, if you're not the best speaker, the best communicator, if your English isn't that great, that's okay. Just get started with it and improve as time goes on. And I think that content creation is the, one of the most important skills that you can focus your time on doing in your business because it's one of those things that it's very expensive to outsource and in doing so yourself, you're gonna gain very incredible skills, very powerful skills that will really help you grow your business more than anything else. You know, for me, 
I've outsourced almost everything else in my business besides the content creation because the content creation is the part of the business that I enjoy the most because um, it's, it, for me, it's like a self-development process. And I love it, you know, because for me, I get to share things that I learn. I get to go deeper with it. I get to integrate it more in my life, and it really enhances my life more than anything. Whether or not anybody consumes any of my content, uh, you know, it benefits me immensely. Um, so I'm very grateful for that. But also, you know, it, it, I think the skill set of it, as you get better at it as time goes on, it becomes harder to be able to replace that with someone else. Now, you can bring in guest contributors and you can have other content creators in your business without a doubt, but I do think it is something that it is worth spending your time doing. And you know, if you're not a great speaker, then even better for you to create content because it's gonna help you become a better speaker. It's gonna help you become better in front of the camera, which, if you become a better speaker, better communicator, it's gonna help you achieving more success in your life. You're gonna have better relationships. You're gonna be able to attract people better in different uh, scenarios, you know, whether it's friends or be able to attract a man or woman into your life. It's gonna help you to better network with other people as well. You know, I don't see any downside in putting yourself in front of the camera and, and developing your speaking skills. It's only gonna help your communication as a human being. It's gonna help you become a better human being in the process. You know, writing content. You know, that is such a valuable skill to have in your life to be a great writer, to be good at spelling and grammar and structuring sentences and communicating with words. I know a lot of people that are, you know, they've always got spelling mistakes in their, in their content that they're publishing on Facebook and their emails that they send me and just looks very unprofessional. And you can tell that they, don't, they haven't spent time to develop writing and be able to communicate with words. So, it, you know, you gain so much, you grow so much through creating content, and then beyond that, it forces you to learn more, to grow more, to improve more, so that you have content to share. So for me, it, it, it's the most enjoyable part of my business. It's the, you know, what I spend the majority of my time doing in my business is creating content, uh, and it's a lot of fun too. So I think that you should relish and enjoy the process of creating content, even if you're not great. Just improve as time gets on. If you need evidence of that, look at my old, my very first videos back in 2012. You'll see the growth, the progress that I made in different ways. So, content creation, guys. I don't want to go on too much longer with this. Um, hopefully, this helps you understand more creating content, why it's important, the different ways, the different types of creating content. I could talk on and on about this. Uh, you know, it's a, a topic that I spend a lot of my time. In and uh, like I said, it's been the most effective strategy in helping me grow and build my business to where it is today. And beyond that, I think more than anything else is the fulfillment that you get of actually helping people and serving people and making a difference in their lives. There's nothing more rewarding than that, and that's become the purpose of my life as well. And so, um, you know, there's nothing like being able to make a difference, it's uh, the greatest gift of my life. So if you guys wanna learn more about creating content, uh, different strategies that I utilize and how to attract people online to you and how to monetize your content, your email list and be able to make money online, then I would recommend that you check out the, the free video series that I have for Affiliate Marketing Mastery at www.affiliatemarketingmastery.com. Head on over to that page, it's gonna put in your email address as a, a, a free video series that I have, some really great content that will go much deeper into this sort of stuff that I'm sharing with you and give you some actual examples of my business and how I make money online. Um, so check that out, there'll be a link below in the description, but if you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up, leave a comment below, and of course subscribe for more videos like this. That's it for now, guys, take care.